the growth in the UAE is like a, a art lover's dream. You know, we have the Louvre, we have the Guggenheim coming up. Look at Al Sarkal Avenue where Ishara is. Uh, there is Jamil Art Center, there is the Sharjah Art Foundation. I mean, we are spoiled for choice. I wish I'd had this when I came in 1980. It would have been a dream, you know. I, I'm so envious of people who come today. I came to Dubai about 42 years ago. Um, more, I, I'm from Delhi University, did my honours in psychology. It was a, it was a kind of a sh cultural shock to come here because I came, I lived in Calcutta at that time. My father was in the railways because, you know, it was, it was a, a little, um, we, UAE was just starting up. So we were in the throes of growth and, and becoming what we are today. But at that time, for a young person to be here, uh, to make a life, it was hard work. M maybe work that, or a lifestyle that I really hadn't thought I would have to face. I think maybe that we both, my husband Ramesh and I, we both really worked hard. But I think what that hard work did is actually allowed us to become the people that we are today. When I came, I couldn't even have a pet because we lived in an apartment, getting used to that. Then I decided, okay, I'd babysit people who were going on vacation, their pets, so that I could have a pet at least for a month or 15 days. It was a, you know, when you live at home, you live with your parents, you're used to everything being there on a platter. We, we come from privileged backgrounds in that sense. Coming here was actually a great life learner for me. I realized what potential I had, the opportunities that the country has given me are more I feel than what I would have had back if I lived in India because I would have been at that point competing with so many more people. It was a, it was a start up in many ways for me and for the country. I think it was when I started my company in 1991, I decided to give up corporate life because I realized that between the two of us, we were both working very hard and I needed to have some time to do other things that interest me, that is reading, art. Uh, I used to volunteer at a library once a week so that I could be in touch with books, uh, music. There were, I had many interests, cooking, so I didn't want to, I, I would go to work at 7.30, I'd come back at 9, that gave me, and we used to have only a day and a half as a weekend. It was, it just uh, didn't allow me any growth opportunities. But once I got into art, I mean got into working by myself from home at that point, it allowed me to develop my interests. And I remember going back to Delhi and I think it was 1991 and there was a gallery which was in um, Connaught Circus in Delhi and uh, buying my first two, three pieces from there, which I still have because they're still close to my heart because they were my first acquisitions, which I call acquisitions today, but I call buys then, right? Yeah. So the world has changed, I've transitioned from buying to acquiring. So when you acquire, you are, you are actually becoming the custodian. When you buy, you're buying to sell, to give away or to... So there's a big shift in my thinking, I would say. Now I'm a custodian of what I'm acquiring. Then I was buying perhaps just as a, uh, as a fad or something I wanted on my walls or whatever it was. I would say my first thing to a person would be research. Think, do, buy a print, not go and not worry about market value. This return of investment doesn't work with art. I have not sold a single piece that I've bought. They're still there. It's my journey as, an, as a person and it's like photographs. You don't throw away photographs. You look at them, you say, how beautiful I looked when I was young or look at my jawline. So you look at these works and you say, ah, I went to Kanat Circus and I bought these four works. They are part of my life and they will be part of my life always till I am alive. So that's what it is. 
we are the I am very proud to say that I have non-profit status from the Community Development Authority. Um, our mission is not to be involved in anything that's transactional or money oriented. We hope that because of the fact that an artist has the possibility of showing with us and has the possibility of a worldwide audience because that's what the UAE caters to, to a worldwide audience today. That they have the opportunity to be uh, targeted by a gallerist, by an institution, by a collector who will inc include them in their collections or in their gallery uh, roster or in the museum collection and therefore gain fame and fortune. That is not for us to do. Our, our mission is very clear. It is to showcase the best of that. It and young, experimental, alongside people who are very, very well established. For example, our last show was Jitish. Jitish Kalat is a very, very established artist. He has been rep he is represented in all the collections, majority of the big collections worldwide. He's a dear friend, but his work, he was, you know, the proudest moment was when he came and he has gifted us a small gift, which is a compass, which is in the floor of Ishara. And he's there for perpetuity now, till we will exist in that space. And for a dear friend and an artist of his state stature to believe in us, to be able to put that thing down, he's actually giving me his blessing to say, you have my blessing to go forward. That's all we need. What else do we need? I started Ishara in 2019. Ishara is a, very simply put, it's an international platform for artists from South Asia. Uh, it's, it's allowing people, artists who have, I feel, and I'm ve uh, my belief in this is very deep, is that the artists from South Asia are world class. They, there's, they are on par with anybody who's showing anywhere in the world. They just don't have the opportunities that the others have. And if we can provide, even if it's a small platform, but actually I think the team led by Sabi has done an extraordinary job because, you know, during COVID, we, I, he and I sat down and we showcased the shows that we had on to almost every leading museum in the world. We did uh, walkthroughs, we got hold of the people, you know, I've made a few connects in my life. We got through to them and we said, can we present these artists to your uh, supporters who are the people who need to see them? Because that's what makes it. There's going to come a time when our artists are going to stand on their own two feet and are going to be acknowledged. I mean, Damien Hurst is a great artist. I love him to bits. But there are many Damien Hurst in South Asia. They're just waiting to be there and have the kind of publicity that is required to become Damien Hurst not taking away anything from the fact that he's a super artist. I mean, he's breathtaking. I want to go and get, become an alternative to Dubai Mall. That's my goal, end goal. So that people have families. So they say on a weekend, they're going to see the beautiful fishes in Dubai Mall, but they're also going to see the art at Ishara. You know, both are free. We want to target schools. We want to target communities. I want people, that's my only regret, that not enough people are coming. I wish we could come. And if you can, if Gulf News, for example, can take up our cause and say, please come, we will be there to service and to serve. That's my only, my only, if there's a feeling of sadness, it's only that I'm not being able to get as many people to come as I would like.